Hello everyone. My name is Hyung Soo Kim from New Energy Business Department of TEPCO. First of all, it is a great honor to win the fifth East Coast Award of Excellence. On behalf of TEPCO, I would like to extend my thanks to all of you here. Then I'll give you a presentation about the success story about the TEPCO Open Microgrid project. Next. Let me start with the project background and implementation. Next. I would like to advise that the project had been developed to aim to achieve three main goals, like helping to mitigate cl climate change, easing variability of renewable energy, and improving flexibility and reliability of power weight. Next. As shown in this table, there are around 430 inhabited islands where 830,000 reside and 127 of those islands are currently being supplied power by diesel generators. However, social needs such as uh, carbon uh, CO2 emission reduction, expansion of renewable energy, and cost-effectiveness trigger the project aimed at developing renewable-based microgrids to facilitate active energy production and consumption in a community unit. I therefore can tell you that 127 diesel power plant leases have come to end in sequence. Next. This is a brief outline of the project. Korean government and CAPCO co-invested 25 million US dollars in the project whose duration was 36 months and that the target was to facilitate the transition to cleaner and smarter energy. Kaza Island and Shinan District were selected for project size. Their population are 330 and 42,000 respectively. And the main industries of both Kaza Island and Shinan are agriculture and fishery. The electrical system for Kaza Island was comprised of 300 kilowatt diesel generator and two low voltage distribution lines, while Sinan has two megawatt PV and three megawatt wind turbine connected to three high voltage distribution lines before the project. Next. Let me talk about the MG system, ENS, which stands for Energy Management System. Key component of stand alone MG is specifically used to forecast load and renewable energy output and battery state of charging management. Inverter is designed to keep frequency and voltage in relative range and then PCF is aimed at helping control active and reactive power in case of shortage of rating. Lastly, water pump and air conditioner in the battery room are used for uh, uh, sus pseudo load in the event that the surplus energy is produced. Next. The main purpose of grid connect MG are to increase the amount of wind energy like as PV, wind turbine, and ESS connect to the grid by optimally regulating voltage and automatical resource power grid by leveraging DMS, which stands for Distribution Management System, and enables step healing technology and dynamic islanding. Next. Next, let me mention the project outcome. Next. The EMS aims that compensating for the variation of the load and renewable energy output serves to improve the power quality and operational efficiency. Active distribution system is designed to help the power grid to accommodate more renewable capacity and improve the reliability. Lastly, the project has favorably impacted the domestic electrical industry growth, like the manufacture of distributed energy resources and distribution intelligence electronic devices. Next. In terms of economic nationality, the project has brought about a great value by reducing cost of energy. Analysis of the fuel cost savings shows that the average fuel cost for 11 months from the commercial operation date was reduced by 81% compared to the same period of previous year. 
and the operating cost was curtailed by 0.1 million dollar per year. Next. Tech has transferred the technology it has developed itself, and it is valued at 0.6 million dollars to local suppliers. On top of that, 13 domestic and five international patents were registered. Eventually, this has laid groundwork for creating policies to promote the expansion of MZ for other islands and create over 170 million US dollars of economic impact. Additionally, the success of the project has led to exporting the MZ model to overseas markets like Mozambique and Canada. Next. Tech has achieved 350 world highest level of renewable energy capacity installed per peak load as well as capacity level of its distribution feeder to accommodate distribute energy resources up to 6% compared to permissible maximum capacity. Outside of that, we have attained 100% world class constant voltage and frequency maintenance rate. As you can see in this graph, the frequency regulation rate of inverter with renewable Learning goes up to 100%. Next. Now let me talk about the next step. Next. The first thing we are currently planning is to extend our energy abroad. To this end, we make sure that the business model is strategically produced by reflecting requirements and needs of the country we are targeting. Economical MZ model is designed to give rights and power to the people not experience electricity yet in the developing countries. For the reason, economical MZ is very simply configured with PV and ESS, not including state-of-the-art technology like EMS. On the other hand, advanced model is aimed at helping island or remote area supplied with power from conventional generation to be energy self-sufficient or carbon-free and consists of cutting edge technologies like DMS and grid connected MZ to target developed countries which want to enjoy the benefit created from the high power quality and improved reliability. In addition, we are currently working to develop power to gas based MZ designed to convert the surplus power from renewable to gas fuel. Next. Let me level this presentation by explaining alignment with ESCAM mission. Next. In terms of developing smart grid ecosystem, Korean government established the national smart grid master plan every five years, while stakeholders actively get involved in the whole process. In sync with them, KEPCO is investing in smart grid development with a strong driver from its CEO. This is the way we move smart grid ecosystem forward based on the ESCAM mission. Next. Thank you for listening. If there is a need for further information or clarification, please feel free to ask me. Great. Uh, thank you very much. My presentation comes to end. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Um, then I think we can now move to uh, our next presenter. Um, Mr. Um, Hyung Soo Kim will have to leave us in uh, a few moments, but uh, his colleagues uh, will be able to go through questions and answers uh, afterwards. Uh, yeah. I will be a man, like a Mr. Chair and Mr. Chu will ask you any question you have. Exactly, Mr. Chu will be able to to go through the questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Kim. Uh, it was a pleasure to having you today in our webinar. And um, well, uh, let's be in touch for future uh, opportunities. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now uh, it's uh, goodbye, Mr. Kim. Now it's time yeah. to uh, Bartolomei Arendarski uh, from Hof uh, Fraunhofer. 
Um, Bartolome, the floor is yours. You can quickly introduce yourself and go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando, for the kind introduction. Uh, I'm Bartolome Randarski. I'm with Fraunhofer Institute for Factory Operation and Automation, IFF, in Magdeburg, Germany. And I would like to introduce you our project Regrid, Rural Intelligent Grid, from Vision to Realization. This project is a part of the ERANET Smart Energy System family of projects. We would like to thank uh, European Commission and Union for supporting us in frame of the Horizon 2020 program. Uh, and uh, let's start the presentation. Okay, what motivates us to implement the Regrid project? So as you know, the renewable energy sources are playing more and more important role in the power system. However, it is not easy to integrate them from the technical, economical, and for all from the social point of view into the power system. As we know, the aim of the European Union is to have 80% of the total electricity demand covered by renewable energy sources in year 2050. So we have a very challenging aims and how to do it. As we know, the opposition of the local communities for implementing and integrating renewables, it's high in the Europe and not only. So there's this typical NIMBY effect. So I'm for renewables, but not in my backyard. So how to overcome those problems? And why we focus on the rural regions? As you know, the most European areas in Europe are rural. You can see it from the graphs on the top. The most regions are marked with the green color, uh, and they are rural regions. Also, there is a more place over there for integrating, uh, for example, big wind farms. Uh, and as well, the rural regions are less invested in compared to the urban regions, so they have a more potential for big investment now as well as the reliability and security of supply in the rural region is lower than in the cities. So rural intelligent grid project was implemented in Germany and Poland. Here you can see the consortium of our project. I think it's a very good mix of the research institution like Fraunhofer Institute, IFF like Academy, Warsaw University of Technology, the industry, like Electrum, company from Poland, European Copper Institute in Poland, as well as re re renewable Kraftwerk Hearts, and uh, association like a renew re Hearts Renewable Druberg. So as you can see here, the project was implemented in two regions, municipality of Dadersheim in Germany, which is well known as a city of renewables, already 80 megawatts of wind power are installed in this small town and two megawatts of the photovoltaic. And they are supplying whole region with renewable energy. They are very successful in investment in these technologies because they develop kind of business plan involving the inhabitants in this kind of projects. And this knowledge and experience we would like to share in the rigid with the municipality of Punsk, which is the region in the eastern part of Poland, a very rural region where some investment in renewables begins, but we want to show them the good pathway in order to accelerate this investment. So the aim, objective of the Regrid project is to integrate REST renewable energy sources into the power system. Uh, to share the technology from the good practice, to integrate renewables in the regional level, and to motivate the investors and users and residents for this smart green solution. Many methodologies were used in developing the solutions of the Regrid project, and as a main result, the interactive energy and infrastructure application for optimal planning and operation of the energy infrastructure in rural areas uh, was implemented successfully in two areas in Dadersheim, Germany, and in Punsk in Poland. So shortly, I would like to show you the three main 
layers which we address in the rigid projects. Actually, I would like to go back to the one slide which, is, uh, which was not shown. As you can see here, the rigid project addressed all three layers of the ERANET Smart Energy System Initiative. So it's a technical layer, social layer, and economic layer. We know many projects which, which are very pretty focused on the technical solutions. However, we cannot forget about the economical and social uh, aspects as well. So the technical layer was addressed in the form of the improvement of reliability and security of supply and the reduction of CO2 by integration of renewables. The social layer was addressed while increasing the acceptance of the renewable investment in rural regions, also creation of new jobs and the opportunities for the uh, inhabitants of these regions. And the economic layer was addressed via developing of the tool for optimal planning of the and choosing of the optimal uh, technology for the particular region, as well as increasing the visibility of the, of the regions. So shortly, the results of the technical layer, so the concepts and methods, algorithms for optimal planning and sizing of the microgrid infrastructures in the rural regions were developed based on the software solutions. The demonstrator in points was integrated. You can see it on the bottom left picture. It, increased, it includes of the wastewater treatment plant. It's a small-scale demonstrator with uh, 30 kilowatt uh, consumption photovoltaic of 40 kilowatt peak, and diesel generator. Also, the battery storage was integrated in frame of the rigid project. Uh, some controllable loads, measuring technologies, protection, and communication were implemented. On the right bottom side, you can see the EMAX, which is the energy management and control system developed by company Electrum, which was successfully integrated in this small demonstrator for optimal monitoring and controlling of the whole system. And now it's commercialized and it's operating in many photovoltaic parks in Poland. And on the top, bot, top uh, right picture, you can see the approach for the net zero energy system of points for 2050, which I will elaborate on it later. From the economic layer, we have developed the business model evaluation tool, which is based on the six steps beginning from the identification of the business model, evaluation of total investment costs, evaluation of the benefits during the lifetime, also evaluating the net present value, and if net present value is uh, bigger than zero, then uh, evaluating of the internal rate of return, uh, up to the comparison of the internal rate of return for the identified business models in order to choose the optimal business model for this particular uh, situation. Oh, the slides are jumping faster. So the third layer, which was addressed in the rigid, is the social layer. As you can see here on the pictures, we have developed a planning tool, which uh, includes the virtual reality technology in order to visualize the future scenarios of integration of renewables, microgrids, and storage in the rural regions. Why we did that? It is because Many people are afraid about the new investment in the region, basically in the rural regions. Erecting new big wind farms or photovoltaic parks, it's not always acceptable by the inhabitants. They are afraid what is coming, how it's going to look like, how they can live with this infrastructure in the neighborhood. And with the virtual reality technology, we are able to visualize all scenarios which can be imagined in the future in order to show the audience how it will look like in their environment. And in this case, we bring the level of fears and the level of fact. So we can see if the infrastructure will be visible, if it will have an impact on my, for example, uh, area. And in this way, we can easily discuss many cases uh, to find the optimal pathway for the microgrids, for the overhead line, for the cables, for the new generation units and to find a better solution and to accelerate and increase the investment process. We have in integrated uh, the solutions in the two regions and uh, in the project we have tested six showcases. 
which were demonstrated for the all parties involved in the projects, for the engineers, for the investors, for the companies, also for the inhabitants and the municipality. Uh, one of the showcases is the analysis of the net zero energy system Punsk 2050. So in this case, uh, the district uh, was analyzed, all the buildings uh, were analyzed, parameterized, and modeled. The whole the area was analyzed in order to find the places for the in, uh, implementation of renewables, choosing optimal technology, also storage, uh, battery storage system sizing applications was implemented and placement of the storage in the microgrid. And in this way, we will be able to develop the net zero energy district. As you can see, the net zero energy district holistic approach for points is shown here. So because we want to integrate as much as possible renewable energy sources, the approach is, uh, is showing that all the consumption will be based on the electricity. So as input, we have the electricity from the renewables, and we are using it for lighting, for heating, for electricity loads, and also in the future for the mobility, so which means for electric vehicles. And you can see the model was implemented in a professional uh, modeling tool, uh, including the multi-energy system, so electricity, heating, and cooling, and also mobility. As a result, we can see here our calculations. So for the very small town of Punsk, we have uh, tested the mix of the photovoltaic and wind for fully net zero energy system. And you can see with the light green, they are marked uh, the, the two lines uh, from the bottom. So we can see that the optimal share is 2 megawatts of photovoltaic and 5.2 megawatts of wind, uh, of wind as well as uh, 1 megawatt and 5.8 uh, megawatt of wind. Then we have a levelized unit uh, energy costs are the lowest, so the costs of the, uh, of the investment and of the operation for the generation units are the lowest, uh, 61 and 51 euro per megawatt hour. Also the net present value is presented, and the internal rate of return is the highest for these uh, two scenarios uh, by 7.9 and 8.2%. Of course, that you can uh, make a question if the, uh, using electricity for heating is economically valuable. As we can see here, using the average values for Germany houses and weather typical for, the, for this region, uh, the net, net zero energy system using for heating, the costs are lying by 14 euro per uh, square meter. And this is the pollution-free solution. So in compared to the natural gas, oil, or the biomass pallets, or the district heating, which are a little bit lower, but they are also by beginning from 9.5 euro per square meters up to the 13.5 euro per square meters. The costs for the net zero energy system are not that much higher, and we have to not forget that this is a pollution-free solution, so very, very uh, good uh, for the for the air uh, and for the future uh, development of the society. And now I would like to uh, show you short video representing the uh, results of the rigid project integrated in uh, Dadersheim and in Punsk in Poland in order to give you some impression how it looks in the reality. Thank you, Fernando, for starting the video. As you can hear, as you can see here, uh, we have a Punsk region, which is very rural. It's a, a very beautiful area in the eastern, northern part of Poland. It's, it's called it the Green Lawns of, of Poland. So it is a, a very touristic and very uh, green region. Mostly, uh, people are living there from the from the agriculture. So they are focusing the typical problem that the people are uh, leaving uh, regions, uh, moving to the cities in order to find the new opportunities. Uh, and also uh, the investments are needed in those regions. 
the security of supply is not that high in this kind of regions, mostly because of the weak structure of the power system, and that's why the, the possibilities of integrating of the microgrids is a very promising solution for those regions. We have also some economic factors uh, which motivate us to integrate the rigid project in this uh, region, as well as the social issues which are very challenging for this kind of uh, regions in order to create new jobs, to keep the people in those regions, and also to bring new people in those regions. Here you can see again the consortia of the project. In compare, we have the Dagenheim region in Germany, which is very successful already with the integration of renewables. As you can see, there are big wind farms are uh, integrating renewable energy, the power system in the regions. Also, the solar panels are uh, integrated in these regions. This region is uh, characterized by very high penetration of renewables. They are supporting whole region with the renewable energy, and also exporting uh, many times in the year uh, the renewables into the main power system. And also, this very great experience of that time was the uh, backbone for the for the implementing this kind of solution in other regions, in this case in Punsk region. As you can see here, there is a, a water treatment plant in Punsk, uh, which already has 40 kilowatt peak photovoltaic power plant, supporting the process of cleaning, and also diesel generator as a backup uh, source for the case of the blackouts. Uh, as you can see, the system is already well uh, communicated uh, with the ICT technology. In the Rigrid project, we have supported the system also with the battery storage system, which you can see now, in order to also uh, operate the system in case of disconnections from the grid, uh, to also support the islanding operation, and also to store the oversupply of photovoltaic during the day or the night time of the uh, consumption of the power plant. As you can see here, uh, the, all the buildings were modeled with their uh, heating and cooling performances. Consumption profile were built for the whole point. The many scenarios of integrating renewables were tested of locations of photovoltaic parts of wind uh, mills in the region also on the small rooftop photovoltaic, which are already now uh, finding place in the point. The EMAX energy management control system developed by Electrum was integrated uh, in the demonstrator of points. As you can see here, also on the control room, the remote access to the whole uh, microgrid is possible, so the operator can make uh, monitoring and also control functions from far away. Um, actually, the, the control room is located uh, 250 kilometers from Puinsk in Białystok, where the headquarters of Electrum is placed. And you can see this is very uh, good for the operator that not only the uh, possibility of controlling on the place is possible, but also remote, so they can save time and the, and the service uh, money in order to, to operate the system. And this is the short overview of the uh, results of the Regrid project. Uh, this uh, communication and dissemination process was coordinated by the uh, European Copper Institute in Poland, Wrocław, with the help of Marco, which also bring us to success of disseminating the results of the Regrid project and also uh, was a part uh, of the, the success of winning the ISGAN Award of Excellence Runner-Up of 2090, which we would like to thank to the all partners and the audience. And I'm happy to answer your questions, which you will have regarding the Rigrid project. Thank you.